Take a look around you. The world shares its beauties with us. We drink from it. We taste it. We are moved by it. We stand within it. There are so many ways we can orient ourselves in this world. We can examine it from a plethora of perspectives, and we can learn so much about this world just by standing still and watching it move around us. The wind blows. It has a certain power to it. It can move whatever it chooses to interact with, if it be strong enough to do so. Watch how it imprints itself upon the trees. The branches of a tree bend and turn, not due to inheritance, but as a result of the strength of the wind. The external force of the wind causes a tree to move, and it is by this stimulating process that it adapts and internally strengthens itself. The power of water. A gentle stream can polish its rocks, or a violent flow can carve out her mountains. Take a look at all the different animals of this creation. Each one moves about in a different way. Legs, wings, contractions. Internally, something underlying their skin is what causes them to move. Take a look around you. We are surrounded by forces that move the world. So, how are we to understand these forces? Force is the primary stimulant of existence, and it seems somewhat mysterious. A dictionary definition lists force as the strength or energy as an attribute of physical action or movement. This is still mysterious sounding. Perhaps we should list the traits of a force to paint a clearer picture. Simply, force is a push or a pull. More direct, a push or a pull with a linear relative direction a point of application, and a magnitude. A force happens as a result of an object's push or pull with another object, its interaction with another object. Even though we truly can't see the forces involved in the interaction, we can envision them and plainly see the results. Take a look around you. We are surrounded by forces, forces external to us, that shape the world. And these external forces take a part in the shaping of ourselves. In our every physical interaction with the things of this world, forces occur. With our every step, every push, every pull, we are at a bodily tug-of-war with whatever it is we are interacting with. One of three things result from our interactions. 1. Either the external force overcomes our internal force. 2. We produce just enough force to equal the external force. Or 3. We overcome the external force by use of our internal force. Our internal forces are responses from sources within our bodies that we use when we detect the need and are intent at overcoming an external force. Our internal responses are how we have been seemingly designed to interact with our environment, using our body's inherent ability at producing force to move and navigate about the world. If we were to take an inside view of our anatomy, we would see that the forces of life have painted their picture within us. Our anatomy really is a response to force. Our bodies are designed to constantly adapt to the resisting environments that we find ourselves in most often. Gravity is something that is constantly going against us, so our inner parts must grow, rearrange, and strengthen themselves just enough so that we can continue to move about in the ways that we choose. The inner part of bone, trabecula, rearranges its internal structure to adapt to gravity and other forces experienced, thereby causing the bone to get denser. Muscle, nerves, fascia, they are able to adapt to the forces placed on them. Even our heart adapts in response to the demands of skeletal muscle. Training our bodies to respond and adapt positively to force is our perpetual task. We really do have a biological need to overcome the force of gravity if we want to do something besides lying down. In fact, we have a biological need to overcome 
all forces directed against us. With our every step, with our every movement, we are constantly at a tug of war with all the resistance the world provides us. Resistance, defined from our personal perspective, is the forces that are external to us that either oppose or overcome our own internal force production. Basically, we overcome and move about this world through the effort of our internal force production. Overcoming gravity, chopping down a tree, picking things up, this is all made possible by our efforts at overcoming resistance. Life is a tug of war of our effort versus the resistance of what life throws at us. These tug of wars happen whether running, walking, lifting, squatting, kicking, moving through the resistance of water, jumping. They happen with our every movement. Let's think more specifically about these tug of wars. Internal force production is a vague term used to describe the efforts of our muscular actions. Muscles are what allow us to participate in the tug of wars of life. When we allow them to act, our muscles can generate tension, which causes their ends of attachment to draw closer together, thereby causing rotation around a joint, which causes our skeleton to move. This action is called muscular contraction. Every joint in our body which is designed to move uses the contraction of muscles to produce the movement. This effectively means that the base unit of movement is a muscle's ability to contract in response to a specific direction of resistance. For instance, the simple act of picking up a fallen tree branch from the ground requires muscular contractions that generate torque that occurs around your ankles, knees, hips, spine, shoulders, hands, every joint in the body to some degree. Whether I'm able to win the tug of war against the fallen tree branch or not really is a matter of my muscles being strong enough to generate enough internal torque to overcome the resistance itself. The ability to generate torque so that we can move and to win tug of wars against resistance is not the only thing muscles play a role in. Your muscular abilities are directly tied to your quantity and quality of life. Improving your body's ability to fight resistance is the primary factor in determining your health. Your muscular system is arguably the most important system as it relates to combating our current health crisis, as well as regaining and creating exceptional health and performance. It provides not only our physical architecture and locomotion, but our physiological infrastructure as well. Muscle is responsible for metabolic regulation. It's responsible for glucose metabolism. It's responsible for lipid oxidation. It's anti-inflammatory. It's responsible for growth. We focus as a society on being over fat, but we're actually under muscled. The lack of using your muscles is most likely the number one problem of most people today regarding health. Cardiovascular disease, musculoskeletal ailments, diabetes, depression, aches and pains. So much disease stems from eating too much and moving your muscles too little. Besides DNA and nutrition, overcoming resistance by the use of our own musculature is the primary stimulant in the shaping of your body, for better or for worse. In a very real sense, this means that we are always training and exercising our body's response to either overcome or be overwhelmed by the varying and vast resistive forces of life. Since we are always training ourselves to respond to resistance in some way, whether we like it or not, it is helpful to reflect deeper upon the internal ranges of what our muscles have to offer each joint in our bodies. This is the range of our function, what we can use to experience, move, pushing and pulling upon the world. To define this range of functional ability, we first must look at the range of our muscular ability. Second, 
we look at what our muscles have to offer in their ability to internally move us through our own ranges of motion. When a muscle generates tension, it can either shorten or lengthen. This is called contraction. Muscles contracting is what causes rotation to occur around joints. Your muscles' contractile abilities are the foundation to your overall range of motion and function that your body has to offer. In fact, each and every person has their own specific range of contractile abilities. When you apply your contractions towards a specific situation or tug-of-war, it is common to say that you are displaying a relative amount of your body's strength. Strength is a basic requirement for existence. Strength is contextual, meaning that it is relative to the situation or individual at hand. The strength you use to overcome a 500 pound squat is different than the strength you use to type at a computer or the strength that you use to run a 100 yard dash. Strength can be displayed in a number of ways. It is by our strengths that we build, serve, move, and help. Whenever we display our strength, we play our part in the shaping of the world around us, as well as shaping ourselves. Everyone has a relative measure of strength. It is one of the most natural characteristics shared between all humans. Strength really is the basis of your interaction with reality and is what allows you to be useful and impose your will upon the world. The base unit of your strength is your relative unbiased musculoskeletal ability. Enhancing your range of muscular abilities to your strengths involves taking control of your body. We all have control over our bodies and are responsible for how we use them and what we choose to do with them. We also have control over our thoughts, our actions, our opinions of others, our emotions, etc. As stated, we are responsible for the things that we do with our bodies, even our subconscious day-to-day -day habits that we allow ourselves to engage in. Therefore, we must exercise control over our bodies so that we can not only overcome the forces of this world, but also so that we can build up the world around us. We are created to utilize our muscular abilities to better the world around us. God designed us in such a way that we, of our own volition, are able to respond to the forces of this world and take hold of His creation. To take hold is a way of saying that we can grasp the world with our hands and feet. To take hold of creation means that we, by use of our own musculature, have the ability to impose our will on the world around us. When God created us, it was His will that we should have dominion over all of His creation. Being made in His image, mankind was designed to subdue creation and build it up in ways that give God glory throughout all of the earth. There are many ways we are able to give glory towards God. We give glory to God through the service of our fellow man. We show God glory when we take care of His creation. We give Him glory when we sing His praises. We show Him glory by resting with Him in all that He has made. What's common of all these activities is that they involve the use of our bodies. More directly, they involve the willful use of our muscles. Willfully, we control the use of our own minds, our non-physical thoughts and intentions that impact how we move, and our muscles, the physical component which is the base of our movements. With our muscles, we are able to express our will. Your will is your ability to consciously move toward something. Breaking down the word toward, we get a picture in mind of the actions of a warden, one who seeks to protect or impose upon whatever it is they are moving towards. When you are willful in your body's movements towards things or others, what you are doing in some way is protecting guarding, or imposing upon them. For example, when I am moved towards my garden, I am moving to be there for a reason. Maybe I am building a hedge around it to protect it. Maybe I impose upon the garden by digging holes and planting seeds in hopes of having food in the future. Wardens. We were made to be the wardens of the world, as we have been made freely to be the wardens of our own will.
We are designed to use our musculature to impose our will as it is subject to God's will on the world. Like Adam in the Garden of Eden, God designed us so that we could freely use our wills towards His good purposes. He even gifted us gardens to be wardens of. Whether it be your family, your work, playing with your kids, whatever it is that you're doing, seek to cultivate your own gardens towards what is good and godly. If you begin to understand the design of the human body in this light, strength will have a new meaning for you. God designed us in such ways that when we take care of our own health and fitness, we have more energy and usefulness to devote towards His goodwill. Your muscles are willing, if you allow them, to work towards the betterment of your entire character. When you train, train so that every aspect of your being glorifies God. How you move outwardly reflects who you are inwardly. We were made to experience the world of creation through the willful use of our strength. And our strength best serves to embody God's purposes. The story of God consistently points out to us that our bodies are designed to rest, work, and enjoy all that we perceive life to be because that is what He wants for us. He designed us to move and to use our strengths so that we can serve His kingdom. With our strong and useful bodies, we are able to experience and perceive more of what life God has to offer us. Virtually the only thing that I can achieve for myself in this existence is the quality of my experiencing. And the quality of my experiencing is directly related to my perceptions or vision of the world. By some delightful arrangement, could the only gift I can offer be precisely the gift God wants, quality of experience, of relationship. God wants us to experience and perceive Him in the totality and best version of our character, and the pursuit of strength moves us towards that. One of my great friends, starting strength coach Matt Reynolds, echoes this sentiment. Strength certainly is the greatest of physical attributes, as it is the foundation of all human and athletic movement, but it is so much more than that. Strength greatly contributes not just to physical health, but emotional, mental, spiritual, and relational health as well. Find a person who start out unbelievably physically weak and is sojourned through the pain of becoming strong, and you'll find a person who knows who they are, including a new sense of self-worth and being fearfully and wonderfully made. Strength is self-evidently important. We all have a need to overcome the forces we experience. And strength, as we have seen, is meaningfully involved in all our movements and interactions with God's wonderful creation. At the basis of understanding our own strength is an understanding of God's character and story. Jesus Christ came that we may have life and have it to the full. Taking care of ourselves is a aim towards reflecting God's character and acknowledging our value for His gift of life. This is a message that we can all understand deep down in our bones. Reflecting on this message from a biblical perspective allows you to better understand the world. Designed, created, and made. These words speak to our beginnings. We are designed to be strong and useful, created out of love, and made to live life in the everlasting kingdom of God. It is with our own anatomy and physiology that we are able to serve Him, and we can best understand ourselves by perpetually keeping Him at the forefront of our every action and thought. God has endowed each one of us with a capacity and a purpose to lovingly go about serving Him. Being moved towards this understanding of reality, you have the true reason for being strong and useful. All your life, your will, your desires, your strength, are eternally meaningful. We are meant to be the hands and feet of God's kingdom, moving ourselves towards His good purposes.